We are in Algebra 1 Lesson 4-6 Standard Form. It is the third of the three forms that you need to know. Um, yeah, okay. I don't know where to put the, you guys. I'll put you guys down there. Okay, so today's date is Monday, November 9th, 2020. Our objective today is to... Uh, Diego. Okay, first. Yep. Graph in Spanish 1 and can do other things of the equation of the Spanish 1. There it is. So... It's all about the standard form. Um, here's the general equation for standard form. It looks kind of interesting. It's just capital A, X, capital B, Y, capital C. Each of these letters, by the way, is a whole number. Um, so I'll say that this is all three of these, A, B, and C, those are all whole numbers. And there's a word for that in mathematics. We use integers. These are all integers. And if you want to put in parentheses over here, if you don't like the word integers because it's too fancy for you, you can say whole numbers. So integers are like five, 10, negative seven. Those are all integers. They can be positive or negative. Um, all right, so uh, to review our X and Y intercepts, to find the what intercept, I set what equal to what number? Uh, go for it, Ridley. Y to zero, perfect. And then the other side, Ashley. Exactly, yeah, you always set the opposite variable to zero. Good job, Ripley and Ashley. So that's what we're gonna be doing in order to graph these. We're gonna find the X and Y intercept of this standard form because every form has something nice and not nice about it. Standard form is nice to find your X and Y intercept because it happens like that. You can do it in your head. The X and Y intercept are really easy to do. The hard thing to do is to figure out what is the slope? What is the Y intercept? All right, and your computer should be shut. Yeah, all right, thank you. So to graph, find the X and Y intercepts. I already said that. And then you're gonna make a line between the X intercept and the Y intercept, those two points, there's your line. All right, so let's try this. I'm gonna graph negative six X plus five Y is equal to 30. Is a question or? Okay. So I'm gonna find the X and Y intercept and then we're gonna graph nine X minus 12 Y equals 36 on this second graph over here on the right. So first on the left, let's find the X intercept. Diego, what do I do to find the X intercept? To find the X intercept. I've zoomed into it right here for you. To find the X intercept. Oh, there it is, set y to zero. So this y right here is now zero. So if I were to rewrite my equation, just to show my work, I would have negative six x plus five times the quantity of zero is equal to 30. And then I boil this down. I'll do the hard math for you guys. Five times zero is zero. It is, yeah, it's crazy. It's mind blowing. I, I learned something new today. Now minus six x, is equal to 30 because yeah, five times zero is zero. Okay, this is the hard part. Well, a little bit hard. How do I solve for X? What do I need to do to both sides to get X by itself, Jose? Divide by not just six, but negative, negative six. Yeah, negative six, negative six. And Jose, you get X is equal to, oops, X is indeed equal to negative five. And that is our X intercept. I go to negative five comma zero, that is on our X axis. So I come over here to negative five, comma zero on the X axis. This is our first of the two points that we need to find. Okay, we're halfway done. Second step, we need to find the Y intercept. But before I do that, notice the shortcut. The shortcut is if I'm plugging in zero for Y, hold your finger over that five y, you can still see it because it's projected any type of way that you can't see so well. Hold your finger over the five y and you have your equation negative six x is equal to 30, which is exactly what we boiled this down to. So your shortcut for all of you, hold your finger now over negative six x because when we find the y intercept, we're getting rid of the negative six x and your new equation is five y equals 30. So that's your shortcut. I will show all of my steps, at least for this first problem, and just in case you need to refer back to your notes. Again, we're plugging in zero for X. So I have negative six times the quantity of zero plus 
5y is equal to 30. And again, Mr. Sindel doing the heavy lifting, negative 6 times 0, anything times 0 is 0. So I get positive 5y is equal to 30, which is why I said just hover your finger over that negative 6x and you have your equation. Um, and then or your final step, the step that I'm hoping we can do on our heads after we hold our finger over that negative 6x, 5y is equal to 30. Uh, Ripley, yeah. Six. Six, because you divide both sides by five, divide by five, divide by five, and you get y is equal to six. There, that is your y intercept. So I go to the y coordinate of six. Welcome, Haiti. Y is equal to six. I have my second point. Two points defines a line. You've, we found our x intercept, we found our y intercept because those are the easiest things to find with this standard form ax plus by is equal to c. And then draw a line. Yeah, we're on lesson 4-6, Haiti. And draw a line between our x-intercept and our y-intercept. Why is there two graphs? There's two graphs because I needed to graph the one that's underneath here, too. There's this graph down here, graph 9x minus 12y is equal to 36. And I, it, it's kind of like a space saver, I guess. Remember, your line doesn't just go through those two points. It goes forever and ever. If you just have a line segment between your x and y-intercept, you are not fully correct. You need a line that goes on forever and ever like this. And I'm even gonna put arrows on here to let me know that, hey, this does go on forever. It doesn't end. All right, so that was our first example. I want you guys on your own right now, show me that you know how to do example number two. It's the same steps. Find the X intercept, find the Y intercept. There's a good chance that none of you will show your work, which is fine because these are really, really easy to do. Oh my God, you guys are awesome. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and at least pause the recording and let you guys try this. All right, so for example number two, you're holding, I'm gonna go ahead and skip some steps now because I'm figuring that most people are. Um, for example number two, I'm gonna hold my finger over my nine X and I get the equation negative 12 Y is equal to 36. Negative 12 Y is equal to 36. This is the equivalent of saying, hey, I'm trying to find the Y intercept and I'm plugging zero in for this X. 9 times 0, 0, which means it is eliminated. It's gone. And from there, I have a negative 12y is equal to 36. That was the most common mistake I saw while walking around. You have to divide both sides by a negative 12, not a positive 12. That sign in front, you have to keep. Divide by negative 12. Divide by negative 12. And you get y is equal to a negative 3. Graph that y-intercept, y-intercept of negative 3. Finally, for the x-intercept, that one is also pretty straightforward. Again, I hover, I, I put my finger over uh, the negative 12y and I get a positive 9x is equal to 36. 9x is equal to 36. I divide both sides by nine. And I'll do that in a different color. Divide both sides by nine, divide by nine. And you get x is equal to four. That's the x-intercept. Come over here to x is equal to four. Make a line through those two and we are done. Notice how my line goes forever and ever. It has, I didn't want my arrows to be blue. Shoink, shoink. Um, how many people did I lose? I know Haiti came in late, so it might be a lower score, but fist of five, everyone, fist of five. And hold on, let me pull up Zoom too so I can see these kids over here. I'm seeing a five from Giorgio, a four from Zeke, a something from Alden, a bag over the computer from Alden, a three from Alden, five, I think it's a five, maybe a four. I'm seeing a three, a five, a five, and a 10. Oh my God, Diego is a 10. That means he needs to be the teacher. I believe that's what that means. All right, is that a cat? I can only see the silhouette of a cat, Giorgio, but it looks like a very cute kitty of a silhouette. All right, so I'm moving on to example number three. What is y equals to negative three-fourths x minus three written in standard form? So it's giving us slope intercept form and it wants us to curve invert into this form up here, AX plus BY is equal to C. And it, as a note, all A, B and C have to be whole numbers. They have to be integers. So all of these are in standard form because they all look like a number X minus or plus a number Y is equal to a number, but which one is correct? Only one of them is correct because it says choose one answer. So what am I going to do? 
They don't have any strategies. Jose has a strategy. Does anyone else have a strategy? How would I solve this? Ripley also has a strategy. There's two people strategies. Alden has a strategy. Yeah, let's hear from Alden. Well, um, I think you would get like this, the X and the Y on the same side. X and Y on the same side. Let's do it. Um, what did you do to both sides of the equation? I haven't done anything yet, so. Okay, so let me go ahead and I don't Probably have- minus or like add okay. X and Y to the same side. That's a good strategy. Let's try it out. So I'm gonna move this over here so I have some more room. And do um, you wanna get them on the left side or the right side, Alden? Do you want to move the Y over to the right or do you want to move the X over to the left? Um, probably the X to the left. Yeah, that makes sense because both the X and the Y are on the left for these. Okay. What would I do to both sides of this to get X on the left? Anyone class? Ripley? There it is. Subtract three fourths X from both sides. Subtract three fourths x from both sides and we are left with i'll leave a negative three fourths out front because notice that the, all of the x's are first so i'm going to put the x first before the y so i'll put negative three fourths fourths come on x plus y bless you is equal to negative three okay it's really really close it's almost standard form the problem is that this is a fraction and standard form cannot have a fraction we're one step away i need I need to get rid of that fraction. Um, question, Diego, can you ask yeah. it? Uh, so you add, like when you subtract the three fourths from the y to it, and then you just take it, what's going to So I'm essentially adding negative three fourths x to both sides. So if I'm subtracting three fourths x, there's the minus three fourths x, and there's the original y that I started with. So I think you probably were expecting something of the form y minus three fourths x. These two things are synonymous. They're the same thing. It's the same thing as saying what's seven minus three. That's the same thing as negative three plus seven. Jose? That is the next step, yeah. And I see Zeke has been raising his hand for a while too, Zeke, yeah. I was going to say, because it's changing y over changing x, you could put negative 3 at the y spot and have 4x plus, or 4x minus 3y equals blah, blah, blah. 4x minus 3y. You'll actually get that reversed. You'll get the, the, the opposite answer if you do it that way. And I'll, I'll show you why in a sec. But it's a good, good idea. Um, <clears throat> Multiply by negative four. Yeah. Okay, that would actually save us some time too. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply by four and show everyone why negative four would be better. So to get rid of this denominator, again, we're gonna multiply every single term by four. If I multiply this negative three fourths x by four, this y by four, this negative three by four, what that does is it eliminates that denominator. A four in the numerator, a four in the denominator, you can cross cancel those. And you're left with negative three X, nothing else. There's no fraction. We have accomplished our goal. And then I keep going through four times Y, four Y. Negative three times four is negative 12. And we have standard form. We're done. Woo! But there's a problem. As Ripley pointed out, in very concise language, there is no matching answer. Yeah, and then this is kind of why Jose said, wait, we should have multiplied by negative four, which is essentially what we're gonna do now. Let's multiply every single term by negative one, which means we could have just multiplied by negative four before, but let's multiply every term by negative one now. So plus, minus, plus. That's the equivalent of multiplying every single term by negative one. Yeah, exactly. So we just have to be careful about why we're allowed to do that using uh, things that we've had before, like rules that we've talked about before. You can't just switch everything unless you're careful about how you do it. Yeah, but if, if you're careful, yeah, just switch the sign. So negative one 
negative one, negative one. I'm multiplying every single term here by negative one and you get a positive three X, a negative four Y and a positive 12 and yeah, that's an answer. Woo, that's D and the D is the correct answer. So in general, for these problems, get the X and the Y on the same side and then make sure everything is a whole number, an integer. And you might need to multiply every single term by negative one, you might not. All right, are there any questions before I release you guys to work on example number four? Yeah, Diego? I only put it out front because I, I saw that they put a negative three X first and then the Y. But if you prefer, you can leave it as, um, I'll put it over here on the side. You can leave it as Y minus three fourths X. And you'll still get the same answer. You'd multiply everything by four, you get four, or I guess negative four, negative four Y plus three X. And then you'll just have to say, oh yeah, that's three X minus four Y, it's the same thing. You'll still get the same answer. So I'll say those two are equivalent. Oops, I'll come back here. Negative three fourths X plus Y. These are the same. S -A -M -E. All right, so please everyone work on number four after you finish number four and you check with a neighbor and if you can't check with the neighbor then you can check with Mr. Snell, then you can work on Khan Academy. This one is a little bit harder, yeah. My, my first step that I would recommend everyone doing right now is somehow use up that two fifths. You can either divide both sides by two fifths, which is actually kind of hard. I probably would distribute the two fifths first. Distribute the two fifths, so two fifths X plus 14 fifths. Distribute the two fifths. I think that is a good first step. All right, good luck. All right, so the easier first step actually is just getting rid of the fraction to begin with. Because again, in back here, the thing that messed us up was this three fourths fraction. The fractions are not okay because standard forward needs to be whole numbers, integers. So to get rid of the fraction right now, we're gonna multiply both sides of the equation by some number to get rid of that fraction. I don't know what number to use though. I, I do, I'm, I'm playing with you, but does anyone else know what number to use? What number should we use? Two people have an idea. Ashley. Good guess. That, that's a, it's still a number. I want to multiply by just an integer to get rid of that denominator somehow. Ashley again. Good guess, but those are variables, not numbers. I'll let you call on someone. Why seven? because it's no, x. Is seven is x. Seven is next to the x? Yes. Okay, so if we, if, really if we multiplied everything by seven, so we'd multiply the right side by seven, the left side by seven, that wouldn't get rid of our fraction. We'd now have 14 fifths. So seven doesn't work, but it's a good guess. Uh, Giorgio? What? You had your hand raised, right? What number do we multiply both sides by to get rid of that fraction? Oh, did you not have your hand raised? No. Oh, my bad. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Braden. Negative three, not quite, but good guess. Alden? Five. Five. Five is the correct answer. Now, I, I know Alden knows why, but someone else explain why five is the correct answer. Jose, please tell us. Exactly. It gets rid of the denominator. It cross cancels. Look at this. If we multiply the right side by five and the left side by five, five on the top, five on the bottom, those cancel out. I have no more fractions. We're done. We're done. So we have to be careful when I, when I said up here, we multiplied every single term by four, that was really a fancy way of saying, I multiplied the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation by four. And I distributed the four into these two terms. Why can't we just say that? 
<laughs> really? I, I, in my experience, most people get confused when they say, wait, you have to multiply and then distribute. It's easier when I just say multiply every single term by four. Over here, I don't multiply this x plus seven by five because really what I'm doing is I'm multiplying the entire right-hand side of the equation by five. When I do that, I've used up the five right here and I'm done, but I still need to distribute the five on the left-hand side. Five is gonna be distributed into the y and to the negative three. Let's see if anyone can understand what I just said by telling me what is the simplified form of my equation now. What do I have on the left-hand side of the equation? What do I have on the right-hand side? Ripley, go for it. Do the left-hand side. Distribute the five into the y and the negative three. You got confused, Braden? So five times y first. No, five times y is just five y. And then now five times negative three. Be nice guys. Negative 15, there it is. So Braden has distributed the five on the left-hand side, which is the equivalent of multiplying five by each of those two terms. What about the right-hand side? What does that look like right now? And don't distribute yet because you're skipping ahead. I wanna make sure everyone can follow us and we don't go too fast. All right, I'll give it to Diego and I can help you out. The, fi the fives were canceled out, so just rewrite what do you see. What do you have left? What do you have left? After we crossed off the fives, we cross cancel the five. I still have this number, so just read what you see. What number do you see? So the fives are gone. The number out front is? Two, yep, so I'm gonna read out the, the two. So doesn't it go two times, wait, when you're doing like two X plus two? You distributed, you're good. You did a step ahead of us, yeah. So two times X plus seven. Oh. And then you said that distributes as what, right? Or Diego, sorry? It distributes as two X plus one two. There it is. So he did two steps for us, awesome. All right, NT and D. Um, K least though. Um, and then on the left hand side, I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to rewrite negative or 5y minus 15. Okay. From here, now everything is an integer. I don't have to worry about fractions anymore. I don't have to worry about distributing. There's no parentheses. Now it's just a matter of get all of your x's and y's, all of your variables on the left, all of your integers, your non variables on the right, and we're done. How? How do we get all of our variables on the left, all of our non-variables on the right? Looks like Giorgio has been raising his hand and smacking the camera. Go for it, Giorgio. Well, add 15 to 14, then you'll get 29. And then, should I just finish it off? Finish off the uh, answer? Let me catch up to you. So you added 15 both sides, that cross off the 15. So your new equation would be 5y is equal to 2x. And you said that's 29, right? Yes. And then what's your final step? Sub subtract two. Subtract. So it'll be five y minus two plus twenty nine, or equal to twenty nine. Uh, are you subtracting two from the two x or from the twenty nine? Um, from the two x. Oh no, two subtract two x. Oh, subtract two x. Okay, I understand. Okay, so subtract two x. So it's 5y minus 2x equal to 29. 29. Woo, there it is. Yeah, thank you. We've moved all, or I should say, Giorgio moved all of the variables on the left. The integers are now on the right. It doesn't quite look like the right form. This is the, kind of the question that uh, Diego was asking before. Wait, can't, can't you just switch them? And the answer is yes, you can switch them. And let's give it back to Diego. How do you switch these to make it look like the correct form? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Negative two plus five. Negative two X, right? Negative two X plus five Y. 
equals 29. Yeah, you're allowed to switch these as long as you know that the 5y was a positive. So you can say positive 5y. And then it switches. You can just move the direction. Uh, it's called the commutative property of addition. You're just allowed to switch things. Whenever things are being added, you can switch the order of them as long as you keep their signs consistent. The negative belongs with the 2x, so it's a negative 2x. The positive belongs with the, po the 5y, so it's a plus 5y. You're allowed to switch them if you'd like. And I can draw little arrows. Giorgio's amazed. Cool. And then we have our final answer. Correct answer is C, as in Charlie. All right. That concludes our notes. So um, our objective today, graph from standard form and convert other forms of linear equations to standard form. How well can you do both of those things, graph and convert both slope intercept and point slope form into standard form? I'm seeing fives. Three, four, three, 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 four, Alden Zeta, four, and Zeke, if he's here, I'm gonna say 84 because I, I see Brown as number 84. Okay. He just threw something at me. I'm gonna assume that that's a four. Four, okay. All right, well, that concludes the notes. You guys should all be working on Khan Academy. Please ask questions. I am here to help you guys.